Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the nth Fibonacci number, which is a sequence of numbers where the zeroth number is zero, the first number is one, the second number is also one, and then every number after that is just going to be the sum of all the three previous numbers. So the value here would be zero plus one plus one, which is gonna be two. The value here would be one plus one plus two, which would be four. What would be the fifth Fibonacci number? It would be these all added together, which is seven. And then we can just keep going just like that. And that is also pretty much how you solve the problem because we are given N and we want to calculate the nth Fibonacci number. So basically we would continue looping until we have found that number. Now an optimization you can make is that for the nth Fibonacci number, we only need to have the three previous numbers in memory. So we don't actually have to build the entire array. So we'll just have a smaller array of three values use and then keep updating it as we move along. So when we're here and we calculate the fourth Fibonacci number, what we're going to do is move this number over in this position, move this number over in this position, and then put the fourth value over here. So basically our new array would look just like this. The indices wouldn't be that, but these would be the three numbers and we would kind of just keep shifting it like that. Time complexity to do this is gonna be big O of N where N is the input value because while we don't have to have all of the numbers in memory, we do have to compute all of the numbers the way I'm gonna code this up. The memory though is just gonna be an array of size three. We can say that's constant memory complexity. I will say that there are mathematical ways that you can solve this problem more efficiently. Unless you're really interested in learning that, I wouldn't waste too much time with that because it's not really something you would see in a coding interview unless you're interviewing for like a specific math type role. So now let's code it up. So I'm going to initialize an array with the first three Fibonacci numbers and We'll say that the base case is that if n is less than three, then we can just return whatever Fibonacci number they're asking for if it's one of the first three Fibonacci numbers. We don't really have to do extra computation for that. But if it's not, then we're gonna start our looping. We're going to loop as many times to compute the nth Fibonacci number. So in Python, we can start at three and go up until n plus one. This will basically continue going until we reach n. Remember in Python, this is non-inclusive, so it won't actually execute for the n plus one case, but i is not really gonna be used at all. We're just using this to tell us how many times we need to compute a Fibonacci number. But to compute the next one, we're gonna do something cool you can do in Python, which is multiple assignments in the same line like this. So we're gonna update all three values simultaneously. You can do that in Python because the right side of the equation is evaluated before any of these assignments are. So we know that the zeroth Fibonacci number is gonna be replaced by the first in this case, the first Fibonacci number is gonna be replaced with the second, and then the last one is going to be the new Fibonacci number that we're computing. What's that going to be? It's gonna be the sum of the three previous Fibonacci numbers. We can do that pretty easily, just like this. Just take the sum of this array, and then we can go ahead and return the result. Where is the result going to be stored? Well, the newest Fibonacci number is gonna be in the last position, and by the time this loop is finished, the nth Fibonacci number should be in the last position. So we can return t at index two, or you could do negative one in Python, but this is probably easier to translate into other languages. So I'll leave it like this. And now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does, and it's pretty efficient. Like I said, there are mathematical ways to solve this problem, but I personally wouldn't spend too much time on that unless you're interested in it. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. It has a ton of free resources to help you prepare. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you pretty soon.